Good Wednesday evening to you. This is Pastor Marty here at Cedar Grove Baptist Church. And I uh, just want to welcome you back to our Wednesday night uh, Bible study in the book of Acts. I want to make mention of a few uh, prayer requests that we've been talking about for the last uh, several weeks. Danny and Anais, uh, I've been asking prayer for them. Uh, Danny contacted me earlier today and he said that uh, they have been uh, given their, their next job assignment and it will be in Miami. And uh, so we're praising the Lord for that with them. And uh, I know they're glad to have some uh, stability and, and reliability back in their, their life again. Uh, so you just pray for them. Also, uh, one of the folks that comes to our church, her name's Catherine. Uh, she's been in the hospital for a while with some issues and uh, they think that they have found uh, what's going on with her. And so uh, you just pray for Catherine and her husband, and we'll just leave it at that. Um, and then my wife, uh, please be in prayer for her. Uh, we were informed this week uh, she had to have surgery last week because of uh, uh, her finger had been infected. We've been praying for that for a while. And uh, so she had to... Uh, have surgery and uh, all the cultures came back this week and and uh, we know that she has infection in the bone and uh, we're still hoping that God will save that finger uh, but we're not sure we'll have uh, some infusions between now and next week and uh, next week we'll have to make a decision on the direction we're going with that so you just pray for my wife Anita Pray for me as well. I mean, it's it's uh, it was my fault, and so uh, been tough on Marty. But uh, anyway, and then there's just others in our church. Uh, I mean, just bunches that need prayers. Brother Brother Bill says, uh, pray for one another. And uh, I would ask that uh, you would pray for me as uh, as I'm trying to figure the direction and the things that. Uh, that our church needs to be doing. With that said, let's, let's pray and ask God's blessings. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you for this day. Lord, we just thank you for the fact that you are God. Um, we rejoice with Danny and Anais as they have uh, received good news uh, about their job assignment. And we just pray that you help them in their church there uh, to uh, continue to be a blessing and minister to those in their community. Father, we uh, we thank you for uh, the news that we got on Catherine as far as they, they're they aware of what, what's going on. And now we ask that you give the doctors uh, much wisdom as they're working with her. We pray also uh, for her husband without calling his name. And we just ask that uh, you bless him Help him with the struggles uh, that he's having uh, internally. I know he's he's having a hard time. And I just pray that he'll continue to get his strength from you and know that you're in control of this situation. Help him with his job and just his energy level. Lord, we ask that you touch my wife in a special way. And Lord, we rejoice that we have doctors that we can go to. Uh, we rejoice in the fact that you've given us many people to witness to over the last several weeks and uh, God we ask that uh, you use those uh, little words that we've we've talked to people and and God we pray that you'll bring your will about in their life we also ask for healing for my wife but if you uh, don't grant that we ask that you'll be glorified in, in uh, the news that we don't want and Lord we ask that you help us to be comfortable with that now Lord help us as we look at uh, the book of Acts God, I pray that uh, you'll help me to encourage people to study their Bible. We ask all that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We're going to go back to Acts 20. Uh, we kind of finished up there last week. If you remember, uh, I wanted to show you how Paul, uh, in the middle of a uh, disturbance in the church and in, around the church, he didn't leave the church high and dry in the middle of it. He stayed until things calmed down, and then uh, he, he moved on. 
Um, but he was in Ephesus, and and so he, he goes, we take from Ephesus, and then we're going to pick up in verse 1 of chapter 20. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called to him the disciples and embraced them and departed to go unto Macedonia. And when he had gone over those parts and had given them much exhortation, uh, he came to Greece. And there he abode three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him, as was uh, he was about to sail to Syria, he purposed to return through Macedonia. So let's talk about some things that goes on in, in from the time he leaves Ephesus uh, to the time we find him going back to Macedonia again. Now we know uh, from over in verse 21 of chapter 19, he had already purposed in his heart that he wanted to go to Macedonia. As a matter of fact, if you look at that verse, uh, it says, and after these things were ended, Paul purposed in his spirit when uh, he had passed through Macedonia and Archaea uh, to go to Jerusalem, saying, I have uh, been there, I must also see Rome. And so we know what Paul's plans was. Luke gives us some details about what the uproar was. And now we find in verses one through three, Paul going from Ephesus, uh, heading to Macedonia, going through Greece and Syria and so on and so forth. Let me give you some places in scripture. Uh, maybe this will in encourage you to uh, study a little bit. Uh, Paul went to Troas before he went to Macedonia. We find that information in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Listen to what they say. Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord. I had no rest in my spirit because I fell not uh, Titus, my brother, but making my leave to them, I went from thence to Macedonia. So we know that Paul um, went to Troas before he went to Macedonia. And he was, he was looking for Titus. And Titus hadn't got there yet. Um, and, and we're going to see here in, in, in some other verses, I think, why he was concerned. Uh, there was a lot of stuff going on. There was a lot of uh, Paul haters and the way haters and Christian haters uh, in these places. And uh, he was concerned for, for Titus. He didn't know what happened to him. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 7, uh, verses 5 and 6, tells us the, the trouble that they had in Macedonia. And uh, then it says that Titus came unto them in Macedonia. Uh, so if you were to go read Second uh, Corinthians chapter 2 and then skip over to chapter 7, verses 5 and 6 would tell you that uproar that was going on. Uh, we also know that Paul went through uh, Icon Iconium. Uh, Romans 15 verses 19 and 20 tells us that he went through there and while he was going through there he was uh god poured his power upon him and he was preaching the gospel with power so that means that there was some things going on we also know out of second corinthians chapter 8 that paul was burdened at this point in time to take up that offering for the poor saints in jerusalem and so you could go read uh, 2 Corinthians 8, verses 1 through 11 would give you the information there about what was going on. So uh, we see all of that was taking place right here in these first three verses of uh, chapter 20. For whatever reason, Dr. Luke didn't think that that was needed to be uh, put here. But through the other writings of Paul, Paul gives us that information. And so that's why we need to know the whole counsel of God. And that's why we need to study um, everything. Things have a way of, of putting the pieces of the puzzle together. Things that we'd have never known if we didn't try to do that. Verse 4, back in chapter 20, verse 4. And there accompanied him unto Asia, Sopatar of Berea, and of the Thessalonians, uh, Aristocos and uh, Secudius and Ganius of Derby and Timotheus of uh, 
and of Asia, Tychius and Trophimus. So these are the people that are traveling with Paul. Now, you got to ask yourself, let's read verse 5, and, and then we'll ask ourselves a question. These going before tarried for us, mind you, the personal pronoun us, Dr. Luke is back with the group again, um, at Troas. So they went ahead to Troas, and they were waiting on him. So why such a large group? Well, I think, uh, I think it uh, is a couple of reasons. One, for safety. Back in these days, uh, you didn't dial 911. Uh, there was a lot of robbers and uh, thieves and uh, Shanghai people along the way, and, and they would kill you or uh, take your money or, or whatever you had. And uh, so when you traveled in a group, there was safety. But I think there's another reason. All of these places are cities of the, of the Gentiles. They're traveling back to Jerusalem. And I think it would be an encouragement to Jerusalem to see how they had sent out missionaries and had encouraged missions to go forth and how the gospel had taken root even among the Gentiles. And so here's this, this uh, delegation of people from all these different places coming back uh, with an offering uh, to uh, give to the church at, at Jerusalem, which is, would probably be almost all, if not all, uh, Jewish believers. Look at verse 6. And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. So now he's giving you a time period. The days of unleavened bread. Now, to me, I have to ask the question, why would, why would a Greek believer, Dr. Luke, who was recording this, why would he use a Jewish time period, uh, a time marker, to mark time. I have no idea. I, I really have no idea. But it's just it's something that you need to ask yourself. Maybe you have a good idea. I, I don't know. Maybe you can tell me someday. Um, but he has a, uh, the days of unleavened bread take place right at the day of Pentecost. I mean, uh, not the day of Pentecost, but the day of uh, Passover, right at Passover. So um, this is that Passion Week. This is the Passover week, and so he's telling you this is the this is the uh, spring of the year, all right. Um, and so uh, it says we came to Troas in five days. I want you to mark that as well. Uh, Custer, in his uh, commentary, he says that uh, when we compare this same trip that uh, they took this the same journey except the opposite way in Acts 16 verses 11 and 12. We know when they sailed the opposite direction, the same leg of the journey, it only took two days. So evidently the winds <clears throat> were contrary to them because now it take, it's taken five days. And so they're tacking. If you know anything about sailing, uh, when you're sailing into the wind, you have to tack side to side and it takes a lot longer. Um, uh, that's where you see, if you ever watched anybody sail a boat, that's where uh, they go out here so far and you see them turn and go right back in the opposite direction. Uh, they can only move a little bit in that direction at a time. Um, so uh, they were tacking into the wind, according to Custer, and I, I tend to believe with him it took over twice as long. Um, so, uh, and they stayed there seven days in Troas, so they ministered seven days. All right, so he's going to tell us some stuff, uh, some things that happened. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came uh, together uh, to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Now, I'm going to give you some martyology, and uh, you can take it with a grain of salt. You can think about it. What well, one again? He's he's uh, 
Luke is given Jewish time markers. Jewish time markers. Now, I want you to think about that. He gives us the, the uh, unleavened bread. He's, he's talking about the day of Pentecost. That's, that's when they're wanting to be in Jerusalem. Uh, and he says, upon the first day of the week, they gathered together to break bread. And, and Paul preached into midnight. We're going to be ready to go on tomorrow. All right. So put on your thinking cap with me just a moment. The, if we're using Jewish time markers, the Jewish day starts, it actually starts in the evening. So it starts at six o'clock in the evening. That is the beginning of the first the, the first hour of the day from six to, to one. I mean, uh, six to seven uh, p.m. Uh, so they start the day out in the evening. Uh, if you ever go to Jerusalem, uh, Passover, I mean, uh, not Passover, but uh, uh, the Sabbath day starts Friday at 6 p.m. They roll up the roads. And it's the Sabbath day until 6 p.m. on Saturday. And then everything's opened up again. And the Sabbath's over with. I believe that's what we're seeing right here. I believe they had celebrated the Sabbath. The Sabbath's over with at 6 o'clock. And I think they're gathered together in the evening to worship together. All right. To have their Christian meeting in the evening on Saturday evening. Now, I know that goes, going to fly in the face. Everybody says, well, you know, we're, uh, uh, we're not uh, Sabbath keepers. Uh, we're, we worship on the first day. They're worshiping on the first day of the week. It just don't fit with our time, okay? It don't fit with our clock. We worship on the first day of the week too. We worship on Sunday, all right? Uh, but I, I'm just telling you, uh, their Sunday started at six o'clock in the evening. And so they come together. Now, now, now reason with me. In Israel, you can work on Sunday. That's not their Sabbath. That's the first day of the week. Okay. So he was actually going to start traveling the next day, which would have been Sunday morning. So the believers come together the first day of the week to worship. And as a matter of fact, this is the first time we see that they worship on the first day of the week right here. And they're going to come together and worship. But tomorrow, at six o'clock and what we would consider six o'clock on Sunday morning, they got to go to work. Okay. Because their work week is from then until Friday at six o'clock. And everything shuts down. So anyway, I believe this was, I believe it was Saturday night. I don't, I don't believe it was Sunday night. It was Saturday night uh, after the Sabbath was over with, and Paul preached into midnight, and uh, he must have been bored. Uh, let's look and see what happened. I'll show you why. And we sail from uh, from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread came into Troas in five days. And their boat seven days. And the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, so we know that that's when they were worshiping. Uh, that was their day set aside. Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on tomorrow, and continued his speech at the midnight. So he preached on. Boy, I mean, he just preached long. And uh, uh, when many lights in the upper chamber, uh, and there were many lights in the upper chamber, when they were gathered together, and uh, there sat in the window a certain young man named uh, Akitipus, uh being fallen into a deep sleep. That's why I say Paul must have been bored. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and he fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. So this boy fell from three stories up, uh, fell asleep, and uh, they believed him to be dead. Look what happens, verse 10. And Paul went down and fell on him and embraced him and said, Trouble not yourself, for his life is within him. 
So Paul is doing basically what Elijah and Elisha done. He's covering him up with his body. When he therefore uh, was come to it again, and he broke bread and eaten, uh, talked a long while, even in the break of day, <coughs> so he departed. So they didn't get any sleep that night. Paul just preached it all night long. They they fellowshiped all night long. They had communion, and uh, and they they were they preached all the way uh, to the morning light. Uh, there used to be a Grateful Dead song about about wanting to sing till uh, the morning light, but uh, they preached it to the morning light. They fellowship to the morning light. And they were brought the young man alive, and uh, they were not a little comforted. So they were excited that the, this young man uh, didn't die. Now let's get these last uh, three or four verses here. Verse 13. And we went before to a ship and sailed into Aso, uh, there intending to take Paul, uh, for so he had appointed, binding himself to go afoot. So Paul, instead of Instead of trying to sail, he decides he's going to he's going to walk. It's going to take longer to walk, but there's a couple of reasons that he might have chose to walk. First of all, it would be safer. If the winds are already contrary, this is the type of time of year that you don't travel like this, and uh, they they might have got shipwrecked. So, so. Uh, Paul decided to walk, probably for safety reasons, but also he's going to get to go through all of these different places and he's going to have a bigger offering when he gets to uh, Jerusalem. So so watch what, I mean, he is a Baptist. He was, he's taking up offering everywhere he went. Look at him. Verse 14. And when we, uh, when he met us at Asso, uh, we took him in and came to uh, Mytilene. And we sailed thence and came the next day over against uh, Chios. And the next day we arrived at uh, Samos and tarried at uh, Trogolium. And the next day we came to My My Maltus. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hastened if it were possible for him uh, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. So when we look at this right here, we see the way they were coming down the coast. Uh, I find that interesting in myself. Uh, what we might do next week is we might take the map and put back up there and look at uh, look at it in detail how they uh, traveled. I've always wanted to sail. I, I love to sail in a boat. I, I don't like sailing the boat, but I like to sail in a boat. Um, I would love to uh, sail in the same path that Paul went. And we see in detail how Paul traveled. And that would just be remarkable to me. Uh, I know it's not very safe anymore, but I'd love to do that. Uh, one, one of the things that we see here is the days of unleavened bread were over with, so we know when that was, and now he's he's wanting to arrive in Jerusalem before Pentecost. So this trip is going to take less than 50 days. All the preaching, all the teaching, all the meeting with people, all the changing boats, all the docking and undocking, all the uh, tacking in the wind, uh, they're, they're hoping to get there in less than 50 days. And so that's, that's an amazing thing with me. Uh, but again, uh, we see... In just this little section of scripture here, a detailed segment of Paul's life in his uh, last missionary journey. And uh, I just find that fascinating that God chooses to uh, record those things. I think also we can learn that we need to study other passages of scripture uh, to, to see how they fit in uh, to these travels. And... Uh, and what might have caused Paul to think about certain things as he went along his way. Um, but with that said, uh, we see Paul still preaching mindedly, still interested in teaching, still interested in strengthening the churches that he went to, uh, the ones that he started and the ones that he didn't start. 
He wanted to do all he could uh, to further the gospel. That should be our heartbeat as well. Um, I think, I, I, I know, I don't think, uh, I know most of us are going to be ashamed when we stand before Christ and all of the money that we've wasted on uh, frivolous things, all of the time that we wasted on doing nothing, um, the excuses that we make not to worship, the excuses that we make not to witness, the excuses that we make not to uh, try to figure out how we can minister to others around us. And uh, I don't think God's going to say to a lot of us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I think he's going to chastise most of us. Uh, so we need to make more of our time. Uh, the other thing is, I think uh, we see uh, also Paul's Jewishness still coming through. He wants to be there at the day of Pentecost. He, he probably wanted to be there before the end, but he definitely wanted to be there at the day of Pentecost. Probably see family and friends, witness to other Jews, know the place is going to be swollen up. Uh, he wasn't a, a law keeper at this point, but he still enjoyed that. He, he it meant so much more to him at this point in time. So with that said, um, we'll pick up as Paul gets to Jerusalem uh, next week. Uh, we're actually going to see that he's in Ephesus uh, and, and before he heads to Jerusalem. We'll talk about some interesting stuff. There is several verses of scripture that are real interested in this uh, chapter 20 uh, from here to the end of chapter 20. Um, I would encourage you uh, to uh, to tune in and uh, see what we can come up uh, with next time. Until next week, uh, this is Pastor Marty saying may God richly bless you.